A lot of times in Thailand, let's be honest, foreigners are the cause of the problem. Hello and welcome back. My name is Alex and in this video I'll tell you about the Philippines immigration clarifying they did not deport a baby. China continued harassment of the Philippines but this time using planes. A Philippine senator seeks the death penalty for predators. A massive foreign bribery and money laundering case. Plus more, starting off with the fan favorite, the Filipino and USD exchange rate. Right now, one US dollar equal to 57.3 pesos. I hope you guys had a wonderful weekend. I know I did. We're back again with some top stories from around Asia. If you're new to the channel, take a quick second out of your day. It's completely free. Take a second, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. Here's our main story. The Bureau of Immigration Commissioner Norma Tansenko clarified that the BI does not deport babies, addressing a news article that claimed a newborn had been deported. The baby in question whose parents worked for a company raided by authorities was allowed to leave the Philippines with his deported parents, with the BI waiving certain requirements to facilitate the child's smooth departure. Tansenko emphasized that the BI protects minors and in distress and cited a recent incident where the three Vietnamese minors with the stolen passports were handled by the BI with one being turned over to social services before returning to Vietnam. I guess the Department of Immigration wants you to know they do not deport babies by themselves. Actually, they go above and beyond and waive some of the protocols to ensure that the baby gets uh, home with their parents. Plus, they're saying that they took care of those three Filipinos uh, that were under 18, not Filipinos, Vietnamese, that were under 18. One of them being handed over the proper program ensuring their safety before being being deported yeah so something to keep in mind they do not deport babies next up three executives of the voting technology company smartmatic have been charged by the u.s federal prosecutors in florida with the funneling one million in bribes to juan andres donato batista a former chairman of the philippines commission on elections to secure business in the philippines the charges include foreign bribery and money laundering the bribes were allegedly disguised through over invoicing during the 2016 philippine elections the indictment comes as smartmatic is suing fox news for 2.7 billion accusing it of death information related to 2020 U.S. presidential elections. The indictment's impact on the lawsuit is unclear, but Fox may attempt to use evidence from the criminal case in its defense. Whoa, you know, you always hear about stuff like this. Like I keep saying, I don't want to get into politics, but it's inevitable. Honestly, if you're going to cover the news or talk about the news or even just be as a grown up person and want to be at least aware of what's going on, you're going to be covering stuff like this. I can never imagine the reach of the whole, you know, how do machines and voting and all that from the U.S. trickling down all the way to the Philippines? I know it's not the same case, but the point is, and you always hear about these kinds of things. You assume certain government agencies, certain individuals are corrupt, just like any human being in any department, right? Like, let's say a police officer in the Philippines or Toronto is corrupt. It's very easy to just label everybody corrupt, right? So, but it's interesting to see, like, definitive proof and like individuals with evidence that have been involved because now it's easier i think to go ahead and say so and so is corrupt instead of like the whole government but i'm sure every government is corrupt don't i'm not gonna say that the philippines or canadian or american government is perfect every single government in my opinion is corrupt to some level Next up, Senator Robin Hood Padella has filed Senate Bill SB 2777 to impose harsher penalties for sexual assault, including the death penalty under certain aggravated circumstances. The bill seeks to strengthen the existing one and make it more gender responsive. Padilla emphasized the need for stronger, more progressive laws to protect human dignity and human rights in line with 1987 Constitution. The bill proposes severe penalties, including death for the involving deadly weapons, multiple perpetrators or resulting in the victim's insanity and for attempted rape leading to someone ending their being or accompanied by aggravating circumstances. And there you have it. Mr. Padilla wants to go ahead and propose some severe penalties for anyone trying to commit these heinous crimes against other individuals without their consent, especially involving uh, either weapons or multiple people. Next up, an incident involving two Chinese aircraft executing dangerous maneuvers and dropping flares near a Philippine Air Force PAF patrol plane over the Scarborough Shoal on August 8th. President Marcos condemned the actions as illegal and reckless while the Philippine government committed to diplomatic solutions is set to respond to its National Maritime Council. Despite the provocation, the Armed Forces of the Philippines, AFP, plans to continue routine maritime patrols in the area with officials expressing concern and China's aggression 
actions may become a continuous pattern. Once again, China being bullies in the water. This kind of stuff happens often enough. I wasn't going to cover this actually, but I kept coming up and coming up. And I don't want to do it just like, and obviously want to be fair and cover an important issue, despite how I might feel about it, even being annoyed with them continuously doing this. So let's see what happens. I know that recently they signed some kind of agreement ensuring that they're going to go ahead and try to be neutral regarding their activities in the water. But clearly China is not adhering to those uh we actually don't know what the details are with the agreement but still it seemed like uh obviously a conflict waiting to happen and then chiang mai thailand has secured the second spot worldwide for its exceptional healthcare system according to ranking royals a globally recognized statistic website the 2024 rankings evaluate cities based on the overall quality of their healthcare systems, including medical staff, equipment, and costs. Chiang Mai, known as the leading destination for both medical care and tourism, was ranked just behind Taiwan, surpassing other major Asian cities such as Seoul and Tokyo, Japan. Ranking royals highlighted Chiang Mai's popularity as medical tourism hub, noting the high quality healthcare services and leading hospitals like Maharaj Nakron Chiang Mai Hospital. The city's healthcare system continues to draw international attention for its excellence and affordability. Thailand as a whole has over 38,000 healthcare facilities with 65% being private clinics and hospitals and 35% state funded general and community hospitals. Additionally, Thailand ranks fourth globally for the number of joint commission international accredited facilities with 65 in total. In addition to Chiang Mai's higher ranking, Bangkok was listed 22nd and Pattaya 40th in the global ranking. The recognition followed 2022 accolade for Chiang Mai as a top city for healthcare in Southeast Asia. Whoa, who knew Chiang Mai would be second in the world city for medical care? I have to admit, from my personal experience, I went there 10 years ago and I was blown away with the facility, the cleanliness, the, the level of professionalism and the cost. I was, with it, I was there with a buddy of mine and he had some work done and I, I was just like, Basically, what it was, I, I don't know what it was called, but he had something on his body, I guess skin tags you can call them, and he got like 60 of them removed for the price of one that he'd have to pay in Canada, and it was fast, quick, professional, and I'm surprised actually, although I do love Chiang Mai, actually speaking of Chiang Mai, I'm going to be there in a couple of weeks, so if you guys want to see what Chiang Mai is like, some food, some travel, some tips and advice, check out my main channel on there called Living Abroad, so I don't really promote that on here because I want to grow organically. Anyhow, I'm going to be in Chiang Mai, maybe I'll just hop into a private hospital and see what's going on. But yeah, good to know an Asian city uh, that's been ranked number two in the world. Staying in Thailand, good news for those people traveling to Bangkok for a holiday. The Big Mango has dropped five places from number one to number six as the globe's most likely destination to get scammed or robbed. Antivirus company McAfee applied or compiled a new list of highlighting cities where tourists are often robbed for their hard-earned cash. Okay, so Thailand going up and down in reputation, not bad, good for Thailand. An Irish man was arrested in Pattaya after he fought a bolt driver and allegedly attacked a cop. Bolt is another very popular app in uh, Thailand, ride sharing, it's like Uber or Grab or Maxim. The incident took place at 920 in Pattaya. The police received the call. The authorities found uh, bystanders trying to restrain a foreign man identified as Mr. P, an Irish national aged approximately in his 50s. He was found injured with blood on his face, a swollen eye socket, and a head wound. Another injured party, Mr. Nepon, a 52, a volunteer police officer was found with a serious head injury and a semi-concussion state. The rescue services provided first aid to both injured individuals before transporting them to nearby hospitals. According to Pattaya Police, the altercation involved bolt driver. At 43, he was found waiting at the uh, scene to give a statement to the authorities. Mr. Whatever explained that the injury foreigner had hired him to take the man from soy whatever to soy whatever. However, the foreigner, who was accompanied by an unidentified Thai woman, had allegedly accidentally set the wrong location on the map. Long story short, an Irish man got into a fight with a taxi driver apparently for setting the wrong location. I'm assuming, this is my assumption before details come out, I think the man put in the wrong location and he thought the bull driver was trying to scam him so he probably started screaming. The bull driver said, look man you put the wrong address. A fight ensued and this is what happened. A lot of times in Thailand, let's be honest, foreigners are the cause of the problem. Okay, let me be very clear. Yes, people will try to take money from you. Yes, people will try to scam you. Yes, people will try to sell you things for more than they're worth. But if you're not drunk or on drugs or high or something, you can easily just keep walking. They don't harass you. They don't chase you. They don't hold your hand. They don't force you to do anything. If you do a simple research or whatever, and this goes to any country, not Thailand, not the Philippines, not Vietnam, anywhere in the world, if in France, if you go there, Ignore people you don't want to be talking to if they want to try to sell you something. Don't play along. Don't think you're cute. Don't like 
Don't drink and start fights. A lot of times in Thailand, especially, Thai people are naturally calm people. It only happens when they lose face and somebody starts something with them. That's when they break your face, basically, in like this guy's case. Don't do it. As a foreigner, if you can't handle your alcohol or whatever, stop going to these places and dealing with people like that. This, I'm not taking the driver's side. I don't know what happened. I'm speaking about all the past experiences that I've had, all the stories I've read, and all the things I've seen. Plus, I've been in and out of Thailand for the past 10 years. I'm very aware of what goes on there on all those like bars and nights and walking streets. You think it's just innocent bystanders that are getting their ass kicked? No. A lot of times, us man them, us foreigners them, we start stuff, we talk stuff, we think we're hot stuff, we think just because we have money or come from a western country that we're better than certain people. Not always, but a lot of times. So behave or this kind of stuff could happen to you or simply the taxi driver was trying to rob him. Time to read some of the best comments from yesterday's video. Starting off with RL8571. European girlfriend panicked. She knew what she was up against with Thai women. Yeah, this goes back to the British guy that didn't go home. I guess the implication is that Thai women uh, are hard to resist. If you guys enjoyed this, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.